Martino and welcome to Fit For You, the show that teaches you how to live a healthier and more fit lifestyle. I'm here today joined by my little guy, Salvatore, that many of you know, and shortly to be joined by my, by my dear friend, Rose Mimo. Stress is such an important topic of mine, as many of you know, and de-stressing is the key to living a healthier and more fit lifestyle. If we don't learn how to de-stress, it's very, very difficult to maintain any type of a healthy eating plan, an exercise program, because we're worried, we're upset, we're stressed. Oh, I'm just gonna eat whatever's there. We find food as our comfort. We, we can't exercise because it's too difficult and oh, I'm just exhausted. So we want to give you de-stressors other than food and not exercising. Believe it or not, pets are a great one of those. And today we're going to talk about pets and most notably dogs a topic that we know and love dear to our hearts. I hope you enjoy the show. I have noted so many times how important stress is, managing stress to maintaining a healthy and fit lifestyle. And for today's segment, we're going to be joined by my very dear friend and our licensed practical clinical counselor who also has 30 hours towards her doctorate, Rose Mimo. Hi, Rose. Hi, Mary. So nice to be here with you today. Thank you. And no matter how often we speak, I always have to make sure I write down your credentials so I don't miss anything. But um, as someone who has actually worked with you in different areas of counseling and so on, you know I, I think you're one of the best. So who well, better to have you. today? Thank you, but today is a little different program than what we normally do. So even though all of those degrees that you talked about, we're really going to talk about one of my loves, and that's animals today. Right, and we're going to talk about how animals can help you manage stress. But so our viewers have a little background, dogs in particular, and we're going to talk about a variety of pets, but dogs have been your passion, and you're quite the expert in that field. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your breeding background? You've spent several years studying and, and so on in that area. It's almost like another degree, but when I was a child, I had a brother, who, uh, Peter Mediate, who was a professional handler and breeder, and he was markedly older than I was, so I spent summers with him and his wife and his German shepherds. And when he would go on dog show circuits, I would go with him. So I've been around the dog show ring since I was a child. And when I chose to do it myself, um, I picked another breed. He had German shepherds, and I chose miniature pinchers, which was Peter's love as well. And we started showing and breeding, and um, we've had them for 25 years. We also have a golden retriever, and we have a silky terrier. That's our new breed. So we will breed Aww. and show. We'll go to the dog shows, and it's just a fun hobby mm -hmm. and a wonderful addition to our household. And when you started to talk about the impact that animals have on this very important subject. It was amazing to me the positive impact it can have. Let's talk real quickly about you know stress and how important it is because acute stress is the most common form and that's just the daily demand from our pressures and that can be a positive thing in little short spurts, right? Absolutely, there's good stress and bad stress. Um, good stress is, is filming as we are doing today, it is stressful and it brings a little anxiety, but it's a great thing. And fun. And fun, but it's still stressful. So there are good stressors and we have them in our day all the time. The bad stresses are illnesses, um, someone in your family dying, a divorce. So those things add stress to your life and anxiety and they're the negative stressors. And I'm gonna take it one step farther. We have demands from demands on our time that we have work and we have family and we have what we perceive to be obligations with friends. And depending 
on how important those are to you, sometimes those can cause stress. You don't want to say no to somebody, but you've got, you know, 12 other things that need to be done and you want to be there for your friends too. So all of those things, you know, compile together and, and then we, we get a little stressed. Absolutely. And during all of the holiday seasons, um, we put a lot of stress on ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, society puts stress on us. We have to do all of the things perfectly. And so we accept that, and it's a challenge, but we do it. But it's also stressful and very tiring. So studies have shown that one of the most important de-stressors can be a pet. Absolutely. Now, for me, right now, it's, it's dogs. But there are lots of pets, birds, cats. Some people like ferrets. Some people like hamsters or guinea pigs. Um, so it's, it just what, it's just what you prefer to have in your life and what fits well for you and your family. So let's talk about, so you're starting to, for example, think about a pet. So what are the things we have to think about? First of all, do you live by yourself? Do you have a family? What age group are you in? Let's talk about all the characteristics that need to be considered when you're thinking about taking on a pet. Well, first of all, as we're going into a major holiday season, do not buy a pet for the holiday. Do not buy a pet for your child or grandchild's birthday, Christmas, Hanukkah, Easter. Do not buy a pet for the day. It is a commitment, and you need to Unless know Unless you do your homework. Unless you do your homework and you're ready for the pet, mm -hmm. and your family is ready for the pet. You also have to look at your lifestyle. Do you live in a house with a fenced-in yard? Are you someone who likes to walk four or five miles a day? Some animals require that kind of exercise. Do you live in a condo that does not allow dogs or cats? So you have to honor those restrictions. Do you have an allergy? You have to, at first, you really do need to know whether you're allergic to um, dogs or cats. And there are some dogs that are hypoallergenic. Mm -hmm. And you do have to do your research. You have to do your research. The best way to do the research is to go online, go to AKC, American Kennel Club, look up some dogs that you've seen on television that you think you might like, and find out their characteristics, find out their temperament, find out their needs. Do they need to run a lot? Do they need, are they a, a little couch potato and they like to sit on your lap? I have a, a sister who's uh, several years older than I am, and, and she wants a dog that sits on her lap, and she does. And she sits there while Betty is watching television, and they are a great, it's a little miniature pincher. She's a great companion for her. So you have to know whether you need a companion dog. If you're a hunter, do you need a gun dog? If you, are, if you have children in the household, there are some dogs that are much better for children than other dogs. And so you have to do your research. I suggest that, and if you see a, a, a movie that has a dog in it, do not go out and buy that dog. It may not be the dog for you or your family. And we're going to talk, we'll get into 101 Dalmatians here in yes, a few minutes. Yes. But uh, as we, before we get too deep into the dogs too, that people can go online, you can research everything from what it takes to take care of a goldfish. Yes. And there is some care involved. You have to feed it. You do have to clean the water, I would think, periodically. Yes. I had one when I was really young, but it's been so long I don't remember the care. Some people like a little hamster starting out. Some people like a bird. But you mm -hmm. also made a point, too, if you already have a pet in your home and you're going to add a pet, make sure they're compatible, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. It's probably not a great idea to have a bird and a cat in the same household, which we did at one point, and it was a disaster. I, <laughs> I will admit to that. So we decided we were not bird-cat people together. So you have to know if they are compatible. Some and that's dogs, their instinct. Absolutely. That's where you say you need to learn the instinct of what was the animal bred to do. It's form and function. 
and we are all attracted to a look. But you also have to know what that look entails. If you like a nice hairy dog, um, you have to be prepared to brush it or care for it. And, clean, and maintain your home because maintain you know it's going to shed all over your house. Absolutely. Are you concerned about having the time to be able to brush whatever you have on? You know, if you have a lot of commitments where you're going out and you can't always, you know, be in, dressed in a little extra fur. And there are some dogs that shed all year. Most dogs will shed twice a year. Mm -hmm. They have a season. But there are some dogs that will shed all year. I had a Labrador Retriever, and I didn't realize when I bought this cute little puppy. By the way, when you want a dog, you don't just go out and look at puppies. You will come home with a puppy. All puppies are cute. Mm -hmm. So we came home with this Labrador Retriever, who was a wonderful dog, but she shed 12 months out of the year. And I had every cleaning tool imaginable to clean up her black fur. Mm -hmm. And so when we were replacing the kitchen tile, I brought three different tile home and I had Polly walk across them and which one I didn't see hair on, that's the one we put in the kitchen because it was driving me crazy. So you have to know the little idiosyncrasies of each breed and each breed has idiosyncrasies. And getting to that too, the example of 101 Dalmatians, you know, when the movie came out and whatnot. Tell us the story because it's a little bit sad that everyone, everyone went out and purchased one, so to speak, or a multitude of people, and then many of them couldn't maintain them, right? Yes, they, they are more active dogs, and they do have some skin problems, not all of them, but they require a little bit more work. So consequently, everyone went out, all these children, um, you have to know, uh, Dalmatians used to run with the carriages uh, for miles and miles, so they require some exercise. And that's great for someone who wants to walk or jog, but for a family, not all families were able to handle them. So many of them landed in shelters, and that was not a good thing to do. All dogs are cute in the movies, but you need to do your homework as to what of their form works for you and what was their function. All dogs were meant, they were bred to do something. So the little miniature pinchers that we raised were ratters and mousers in Germany at the turn of the century and 150 years ago. So they're going to go after anything little. So you really don't want a miniature pincher in your house if you're raising hamsters. Mm -hmm. They don't know the difference between your pet hamster and the local mouse. And they'll go after it. And they've been known to kill things like that. So you have to know what the function is of the dog, what it was bred to do originally. Mm -hmm. And that will continue on throughout their lifetime, their nature. Mm -hmm. If you can handle them, that nature dog, that's mm -hmm. great. But you really do need to do your homework. So I think bas which basically what we want to talk about, what they want to look at. You want to look at A, what age group are you in? Mm -hmm. B, what is your physical fitness level? And what are your, phys do you have any physical limitations? Yes. For example, if you're in your 70s or 80s or 90s, you might not want a dog that requires a lot of running, where if you have young children, that's a great activity for the dog and the children. Absolutely. And you have the space for it. Absolutely. And if you live in an apartment, do you have a park nearby? Do you have an area nearby where you can take your pet? Because the opposite, just like with anything uh, of the dog de-stressing you, if you don't make the right choice, it can cause stress. Absolutely. And you have to know how to train the dog. You can't just bring a puppy in the house and say, this is it. Here You live here now. You do have to train the dog. And there are some wonderful places, AKC locally, has a training facility. Many of the pet stores have training programs. Mm -hmm. What a great way for someone young, someone older, to get out of the house and go to the training facility to train your animal. And it's a great bonding experience. You want to learn how to potty train your dog. 
you want to learn if your dog runs outside and you call the dog that he or she will come back to you and not run into the street and have a catastrophe for your whole family. So you need to train your dog. Crate training is a great way to train an animal. When you're not around, you put them in the crate. When you want them to go outside and potty, you take them out, potty them, and they learn. Gee, I can't do that in the crate or in the house. Mm -hmm. So crate, I'm a firm believer in crate training animals, and it's not cruel. It's just so you can live more compatibly with your animal. Let's talk about what the pets do to de-stress a little bit on the health issues real quick, and then we'll get back to particular breeds. Blood pressure reduces blood pressure. Always reduces blood pressure. Decreases heart attacks. I mean, it is. it reduces anxiety, reduces stress, practically eliminates depression if you have a pet. It is unbelievable. In a more clinical setting, they have used pets um, with children who have seizures, and pets, especially dogs, will be able to alert moms and dads. Their, a, a seizure is coming, so they have just a sixth sense about them in healthcare facilities. Uh, pets have been used to diagnose cancer. They have a wow. sense. Their sense of smell is, is phenomenal. Police forces use them um, to, to sniff out drugs. So there are lots of function ways that animals can help us. But from a, a, the standpoint of just having a pet so you don't feel lonely. Well, and as we were preparing for today's taping, let's talk about the pet doesn't talk back to you. So, no. you know, it's unconditional love, yes. which is really important. When, yes. when you come in that door, that animal, and from my experiences with a dog, is so loving and so caring, and, and you know they're going to be there for you. And you can talk to your pet if you're stressed about something. They may not talk back, but you learn to communicate, right? Touch on that a little bit. I understand what my dogs need, um, and I understand when they're crying or yipping. I understand what they're saying. Now, people will say I'm crazy, but I'm usually pretty right on because we have a relationship. And so absolutely... You can talk to your dog and you know, or your cat, or your bird, and you know your secrets are going nowhere. Yes, they're very, very, very good with the secret. Safe. You're yeah. safe. Yes. You may not be able to trust a friend or a relative with your secrets, but your pet, you always can. Your pet, you can yell at your pet, walk outside with the garbage, turn around, and come back in, and they've forgotten that you yelled at them and they're happy to see you mm -hmm. all the time. They give you unconditional love, which truly no one else on the face of the earth can do. It is such a gift. It is such a gift having a pet. If you can, and not everyone can, I understand that. Um, some people are allergic, so you have to be really, really careful what pet you get, especially if you have an allergy. But there are some pets that are hypoallergenic, that don't shed. Mm -hmm. My Silky Terrier, her fur, dog show people say coat, feels like human hair. And she doesn't shed. So she is hypoallergenic for someone who has truly has allergies. Um, someone like that would be um, perfect for a, and she is really good with children. There are dogs that are hairless. Well, we were talking about that cute little dog because when you start to think about the care of your pet, now this little hairless dog, and it's kind of amusing, like you have to watch it in the summertime, you have to put a little sunscreen on it because it doesn't have any fur so it could get sunburned. Well, and in the winter, you have to put a coat. What kind of dog? It's called for... a Chinese crested, oh, and they can so cute. be born completely hairless except for the tufts on the paws and on the head. Um, and on the tail, but they can also be born completely coated. Um, you wouldn't even think it was the same breed. And they can be in the same litter. But in the winter time, picture if we were walking outside naked, we, we need clothes on. 
You're hairless. So the point being, you really need to know what the particular requirements of your animal is. If the dog is hairless, you have to make sure that you're thinking about, hey, little sunscreen, a little coat, whatever it needs. Absolutely, absolutely. You also need to know what they were bred to do. Um, for example, the beagles are scent hounds, and um, I have a son who has a, a, a miniature beagle, and I said to him, she will howl. They're howlers. That's what they do. That's how they talk to you. And I said, she's a scent hound. So if she catches a scent, she's going to take off. Make sure you either have your, fen your yard fenced in, or you have an invisible fence, or you always keep her on a chain, you know, a long chain when you're putting her out. And one night she didn't have her invisible collar on, and she caught a scent, and she was gone for several hours. We were all driving around the neighborhood calling her. That's her function. That's her job, is to catch a scent for hunters. And that's what they were bred to do. Historically, that's what they do now. And so you have to know, gee, do I want a scent hound? Do I want a sight hound? Do well, I want a lap dog? And you know what's interesting? Like, especially with Salvatore, my dog, who's a long-haired dachshund. You know, when people are like, oh, you always have him on a leash. I do, because he has a tendency, he was bred to go seek out, you know, the little little moles and things, I guess, in the ground. In, right. in, the, the, in the ground, Right, yes. and he'll take off. So I always worry that that's why I have him on a leash. It's not because he's not trained properly. That's what he was bred to do. Absolutely, that's what he was bred to do. The, there are many dogs that uh, work better with policemen the German Shepherds, mm -hmm. you know, they, the Doberman Pinschers, that's what they were bred to do. A German Shepherd, if he bites an arm, that's 400 pressure, 400 pounds of pressure in his teeth. So you have to know what they were bred to do and what they still do very, very well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about where to get your pet because I want to talk about the shelters a little bit. We talked about, you know, when 101 Dalmatians came out, everybody went out and bought one. And a little, you know, a little less than half, right, ended up in shelters because after everyone took them home, they didn't have the means to necessarily take care of them or they didn't understand that they're a pretty lively pet, right? Beautiful, but... They're very lively. They're very active. Six to eight million dogs per year are placed into shelters because of people unable to take care of them. There are many no-kill shelters that will try to place the animals in homes. So about three to four million pets are placed, but that means about four million pets are euthanized every year because people just cannot take care of them, the shelters cannot take care of them, and so my suggestion to you, there are only 25% of all animals are purebred. The rest are mixed breeds. You can find them in shelters. If you really have a specific dog that you want and you don't have the money to purchase one, there are rescue animal people that will take the people's animals into their home and you can always find a rescue miniature pincher group or a rescue golden retriever. The rescue um, greyhounds, they're racing dogs. After about two years, they want to place them. Or if they haven't oh, done so well lovable. in the racing uh, ring, um, and so they are placed, and they are very grateful dogs. They're bigger dogs, mm -hmm. but they really are kind of lap dogs. They want to lie next to you on the sofa, and they're very grateful because they have been crated and caged and are raced and then back to their little stall. So there's, there are many, many places where you can get um, a purebred dog if you want one that is specific to your needs. Or you can go to a shelter and find the dog that picks you. I'm a firm believer in that. Walk into a shelter. Our first cat, I walked into a shelter and she looked at me, and she was all white 
with one blue eye and one brown eye. Of course, we called her BB. And she walked over to me, and I knew she was mine. So the cat or the dog that picks you is the one that will truly be your best friend forever. You do kind of connect. There is a little chemistry there. And they are some of the most lovable, wonderful pets when you get them from a shelter. They're so excited to have, have a home. And the shelters, usually, they'll give them their shots, right? They give them their shots many times. They're neutered. They will, you pay $100 or whatever their fee is, but it is, includes spaying or neutering, and I encourage people to spay and neuter their animals. Uh, one, they're better pets. They prevent cancer. In a female, if you're, and a male, if they're spayed or neutered, if you do not spay and neuter, um, you do have to deal with their seasons, uh, which come every six months. And your males, if they smell someone in season, they're going to take off. So they really are better behaved. But after about six or seven years of age, whenever we've had a female or a male, I always neuter at six or seven because that, in, that lengthens their life span. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about how the dog can keep you, a dog in particular, it could be a, a, you know, other pets, but can keep you healthy. So now you're going to think about how you're going to feed your dog, food, treats, I find people are oftentimes much more concerned about the quality of the food they're giving their animal than they are about how they're eating themselves. Absolutely. I read labels for, on my, when I pick up a, a bag of pet food, and I'm not going to suggest any pet food, um, I have a particular one that I like, um, but I read the label. I want to know there is no gluten. I want to know there are no fillers. I want to know what the first ingredient is. Don't we do that when we go to the store now for ourselves? You really need to do that for your pet as well. And you have to find a, a pet food that your dog likes. Table food is not all that great for your pet. Other than, I am a firm believer in carrots as a treat rather than something that is more fattening for your dog. Overweight dogs will not live as long. And green beans. Green oh. beans are wonderful as a filler, especially if you have an overweight dog and you have a dog that, um, all of my dogs are self-feeders, so I can leave food out and they kind of pick at it. If you have a self-feeder, you're blessed because they're not going to be little chow hounds. But if you don't, if you have one that is really food motivated, you really do need to supplement when they are crying for something to give them a carrot in the afternoon or give them a little bit of green beans, something that won't give them a lot of calories. And I like the fact if people aren't reading labels or not sure what to do, think about doing it for your dog and yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. We, you noted that your sister Betty, whom I love, and even though she likes a little lap dog, and so you picked out your little min pin. She wanted a, a min pin, and, and we gave her one, and unfortunately she passed away, and so I replaced it with... The a, min pin passed away. The, the min pin passed away. Thank God, Betty's um, still with us. Betty is still with us, 91 <laughs> years young, and I knew she needed another dog, even though she was... 88 years old, and she always knew that when, God forbid, when something happened to her, I would take the dog. Mm -hmm. And I suggest for older people, it's a great thing to have a dog, but you also have to have a succession plan mm -hmm. for your animal. And she knows that her Holly will live with me um, if Holly outlives Betty. But for Betty, you know, I was very concerned, so we put in a fence, a small fenced in area for the dog um, because I knew she couldn't go chasing after a dog. And in the winter on a, a bad day, I didn't want her to have to go out. So we put in a little X pen, which is just a gated little, it's like a puppy pen or a child's pen. And she can go into the garage and put her dog there 
on bad days, rain, snow. She has a very spoiled little dog yeah. who does not like the snow or the rain. But the important thing is it gets her up and moving. Even though she's not going to go out and walk the dog, now when we get back into the health and fitness angle, your pet's going to keep you, get, you have to let it out, you know, somewhere every few hours. She cries and she goes to the door and she has a bell that Holly rings and it's just a little tiny bell that we've attached to the door and Betty knows when she has to get up. So it would be oftentimes Betty would sit for several hours watching movie but because Holly gets her up she goes to the door several times a day probably more often than she would if she didn't have Holly. Exactly. What a great way just to get her up and moving. Exactly, and we, studies are showing that if you have an office job and now they're coming out with desks that raise and lower, that how important it is not to just sit every hour, every hour and a half. Even if you just stand up for, you know, five, 10 minutes, then sit back down, up and down, makes such a difference. Absolutely, so for Betty, Getting up out of bed, she gets up when her dog wakes her up. She does sleep in bed with Betty. And when her dog wakes her up, she says, well, i got to get up now. And she might sleep for a little longer, but the dog keeps her moving. Not walking around the block and doing a lot of physical exercise. Mm -hmm. Keeps her moving all day long. And it is a great companion for her. She has said to me over and over again, this is the best gift you have ever given mm -hmm. me. Now let's and let's talk about the other side of the age spectrum. So now you have children, and now you find out what the best pet is for your home, and now you take mm -hmm. this pet into your home. This does a lot for teaching your children about responsibility, caring for something. Talk about that a little bit, Ro. I think it's phenomenal for a, a family to have a pet, whether it's a bird, a, a, a kitten, or a dog. And you give children the responsibility. You will feed the dog in the morning or when you come home, whenever you choose to feed the dog. Mm -hmm. You will go with me when we take the dog to the vet. Pets need vaccinated just like children and just like all of us as adults. And so it teaches them responsibility. It teaches them compassion if their animal is sick. Unfortunately, it teaches them about life and death as well. Mm -hmm. Pets don't live as long as we want them to live. Mm -hmm. it teaches them how to take care of a sick pet, and it teaches them how to love a dying pet, and how to. Well, I'm going to jump to the more grief. positive, and, and that's all true. Yes. I'm going to talk about the more positive side of things, though. So now you have this pet because our kids want to sit at the computer, and, or they want to play that video game. Now the pet's going to get them outside. Let's throw a ball. Let's throw a Frisbee. Let's take the dog for a walk as a family. Let's go out and, you know, play with whatever. I think that's really important. It's absolutely important. Or just saying the dog needs to go out, take it out for a short walk. Mm -hmm. My oldest son's children are the only ones that take their dog out, Tootsie, um, into the yard and Mom and dad really don't do that. They've given the responsibility to the children, and they adore this little dog. It's called a Morky, and that means it's part Maltese, part Yorkie. And they've chosen the dog, and they are responsible for the dog, and they absolutely adore her. Mm -hmm. They groom her, they brush her, and they take the dog outside. There are ways to play with your dog, fetch, hide and seek. Dogs are brighter than we give them credit for. I bought a little Kong toy that you put food into it and I set it in the middle of the family room the other night and our pet, our Silky, played for two hours getting the food out of this little toy. Kept her busy and we certainly sat there and laughed at her for hours. So there are lots of different toys that are on the market. There are a lot of different things you can do with the dog. Obedience training. If you've ever gone to a dog show, they don't only look at the dog for its form, but they also have trials for obedience and agility where you actually have to run with your dog. So if you're so inclined 
to be really um, fit with your dog and you can do it. It takes a little bit of, it's a little strenuous. Um, there are a lot of trials like that. The hunting trials, um, you can do that with your dog. So there are a lot of different avenues for families if they choose to. I loved going to dog shows with my brother. Mm -hmm. And I loved, I loved it when he won with the females and we, he won with the males and I had to take one into the ring. That was my joy. And so I'm still doing it. I'm still going yeah. to dog shows. And dog show people are different. They're characters. They're wonderful, wonderful people. And their dogs are their lives. But, and that makes a nice family outing. It does. And it's a relaxing afternoon. It Something is. Something fun. It is. And we have one of the largest dog shows in the country here in Youngstown. It's at the Canfield Fairgrounds in the first week in August. And we have about 5,000 dogs that are at the dog show. And it's wow. a four-day show. And so it's nice just to see all of the dogs talk to owners, watch the obedience ring, watch the agility ring, and you cannot purchase a pet there. It's against the AKC rule. You may see puppies there, but you may not purchase a pet. And so you get their card, you go to their house, and you talk to them about their dogs and say, what is the function of this dog? You know, I really can't run. Do I really want a, a dog, a hound that needs a lot of exercise? Mm -hmm. So you have to go to the show and just enjoy tons of vendors. You can buy anything you want for your puppy, um, from vitamins to fancy leashes to dog food, clothes for your dog, um, sweaters, coats, crates, um, and they will have it all at the Canfield Dog Show. How cute. Let's talk about just the relaxation of sitting and petting your animal or brushing your animal, which is a kind of a nice way to help to take care of your dog by brushing his coat, but it can be very relaxing for you. It's very relaxing, especially some of the dogs. My Silky Terrier has human hair, and so every few days, I should probably do it a little more often, I let her sit on my lap while I'm watching television, and I brush her, and you can tell she's loving it, and I know my blood pressure has been reduced. And if I've had a stressful day, also the stress just seems to leave. And when she's sitting on my lap, every night she curls on my lap, I know the world is good, mm -hmm. and I feel much more comfortable. I feel a lot more comfortable knowing that Betty, my sister, uh, has her dog. It's the best. She has a she has a security system, mm -hmm. but her best security system is that little min pin. They're known as the king of the toys because they hear everything, and they alert her if anyone is within fifty feet of her house, and she feels at ease having her dog. I was going to say it's a very nice component for safety and especially if you're going to start to leave you know you're thinking your kids are getting to an age where you can leave them alone for a little bit. It's always nice to have a dog there to alert them. I feel very safe at night because mm -hmm. I know my little guy will start barking if he hears the slightest thing you know around you know our property. And, and, and I think that's a really nice safety component. Oh, I think so, too. Th that is relaxing, de-stressing. Statistics say that families who have a pet, um, there are less break-ins. Mm -hmm. Burglar doesn't really want to tangle with a pet. And so if you have a fenced-in yard, if you have a pet of any kind, uh, burglars kind of stay away from those homes because they don't know if they'll bite. Mm -hmm. And truly, we have a golden, we have a silky, and we have a miniature pincher. You don't want to tangle with the miniature pincher. The golden would probably lick you to death, but the function of the miniature pincher, they're known as the king of the toys. They'll go after you. Well, you know what's interesting? And people make this mistake sometimes. I'll never forget. So I was at an airport, and we're going through security, and I had my little Salvatore with me, who is <coughs> 16 pounds. So the security guard said, um, can I pet him? And I was holding him, and I said, oh, sure. 
And I said, he's so little. And he said, the gentleman shows me his hand, and he has a scar that goes from the knuckle to the wrist. He goes, see this scar? He goes, I pet a chihuahua. I go, a chihuahua? He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, my only point is it doesn't matter sometimes how big or small they are. Know the temperament of the animal, you know, and don't just... You know, just don't just assume every dog's friendly, right? You wanna not only any dog, every dog, or whatever your dog's nature is. You put any dog under stress, they're going to go to their fight or flight kind of modem. Mm -hmm. And so, even the sweetest dog under stress, you cannot really predict what they will do. So I always say, "May I pet your dog?" And if they say yes, I put my hand out. I let the dog sniff me and I do this and if the dog looks like it's going to bite me I kind of gently pull my hand back because in an airport you don't know with all of the commotion or anywhere anywhere the mall or just walking Outside. if they're under stress um, they're going to maybe protect you mm -hmm. my dogs will protect me Mm -hmm. And so I can't predict, and I always make them sit, and I watch them. And when children come up to my dogs, I'll say, wait a minute, let them sniff you first. Let them kind of get your smell, mm -hmm. and then, yes, you may pet them. So you always have to be very cautious with your children. Children just immediately want to pet everyone they see, but you have to know if that dog is receptive to it, and there's a process bringing a dog, another person's dog, into the household, you have to know how well your dog will handle that. So if you have one dog and you want to bring another dog into that, the family unit, you have to introduce them gradually. There's a process of how you introduce them. And some just are not going to ever accept a new dog. When we brought or any the silky, type of other pet. Or any type of pet. When we brought the Silky in, I knew our Golden would love her. And it was, I always say, it's the best toy we ever bought him. They play nonstop. The, and the Golden will lie on his back, and the Silky jumps on him. And, and, you know, if he's had too much, he puts his paw on her. And it's his toy. It's almost like a human toy for him. And she adores him. She curls up next to him. Oh. But not all dogs would have accepted her as well as... Benny does. I'm going to um, go to a little different angle of all this for people that maybe or just don't have the means of taking care of it. They're traveling, they're busy, no one's at home, you know, to take care of it, whatever. Don't lose sight of the value of a stuffed animal. And children have taught us. Children love their little stuffed animals. They're calming. But if you can't manage a live pet, you can, you can become, I'm not saying you want to become overly attached to a stuffed animal that, you know, to a point where it's a little ridiculous, but you can also, you know, get a, a larger, and just looking at that or thinking about that to put yourself in a calmer place of mind, you know, just having, it, just to think about. Studies have shown that that can work too. Absolutely. If you go into a nursing home, um, there are, Many nursing homes have pets. Some facilities will even allow you to bring your cat. A friend of mine, uh, when she had to place her mother into a nursing home, they let her bring her cat. Oh, to live she there? She was to live there. Not all places will allow that. Some nursing homes have resident cats or dogs oh. that just kind of walk the halls, go in and out of the rooms, and it is found that People will smile. When I got uh, my min pin, the current min pin that I have, my mother-in-law was in a nursing home, and I brought this little puppy, this little miniature pincher puppy that was just two pounds, into the nursing home, and I had to go room to room, and le I let her sit on the bed. And when I started showing her, the residents would say, let us know how she did. So I would bring her in and let them pet her and wish her well. Then I would bring her back in with her ribbons, and they would pet her and say, "Good, you know, we're so proud of you." But as my mother-in-law tended to 
not know a whole lot of what was going on. She needed something with her constantly. And we did bring stuffed animals. And for my mother-in-law, who was a wonderful mom, she needed something to love and, and hold. And I brought her a baby doll. And she could hold it. And other residents in this facility also had baby dolls because they were classic moms. Mm -hmm. And that's what they remembered best. So yes, stuffed animals, baby dolls, whatever you have to know the nature of the person you're dealing with and what they are most comfortable with but and what they all, need. And th but they're de-stressors. Absolutely. Important to... Absolutely. And it re they go back in time to remember their function. And it may have been just being a wonderful caretaker. And so they want to do that again yeah. without having all of the responsibilities and the work of a, a something alive. But they can still get all of the benefits that they would get from a doll, a, a stuffed kitty cat, um, or a, a stuffed bear, or a dog. Absolutely. Aww. Well, Ro, thank you so much for being here. We so appreciate it. And to our viewers, I hope we gave you some ideas if you think about bringing a pet, especially a dog, into your home to de-stress a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mary Papino, and this is Fit For You.